Welcome to Power Charting. I'm Bruce Frazier, your host. We have a very special episode for you today. And we have with us Roman Bogomazov. Roman, thanks for being here. Bruce, as always, it's my pleasure to be here with you and to discuss the market. We have a lot to do. So yes. we have some great news uh, for the Wyckoff community. And then you're going to take us through some uh, recent real-time trading that you have been uh, doing and uh, talk about the current markets. Have a couple of announcements, so let's get started. But here we go. Uh, Roman's going to uh, talk about some very exciting things that are happening for the Wyckoff Nation. And then we're go going to get into intraday trading with Roman. And then if we have time, we'll look at some point and figure studies and uh, breadth indicators. So with that, uh, Roman, uh, we had a great Wyckoff market discussion session yesterday. Yes. And it was uh, uh, very exciting. We covered the current markets and we covered uh, uh, some very interesting stocks. Uh, tell us more. Well, first of all, I just want to say that Wyckoff market discussion is probably the class to be in if you want to be um, aware about our opinions about the opinions of the Wyckoff Nation on what's going on right now. We've been following the markets, not just on the weekly basis, literally on the daily basis. And uh, we've been inviting all of the students from our school, you know, to come to this class. And, you know, Bruce is just doing such a great job, you know, bringing us new analogs, discussing, you know, the overall environment, you know, what's, what's, potential scenarios you know could develop and you know i'm i'm showing a lot of the trades and the analysis just based on the intraday just because of how uh, velocity is so high and you have to be on lower time frame so all of that is being discussed there i would highly encourage anybody who is into wyckoff method to join us for those discussions um you are most welcome well i believe that you're trading tactics uh, these past uh, weeks have been spot on, especially considering the remarkable volatility that we've been coping with and how best to be able to navigate that and then also uh, make a, um, uh, um, you know, make good low risk trades in a high volatility environment. It's been challenging, but, you know, with your help and the help of the whole Wyckoff Nation, I think that we went uh, through this period, you know, pretty well. Now, I want to say that uh, you have a couple of courses uh, coming up, and uh, we can certainly talk more about those in a minute, but you have the uh, summer series of the Wyckoff Trading Course Part 1 and Part 2 that are coming up, and for anybody that wants to really sharpen their Wyckoff trading skills, uh, th these are the classes to take. Uh, tell us more. Well, uh, first of all, lack of trading course, either part one or two, uh, we consider those fundamental courses, meaning that any type of trader, either you're a stock trader, forex trader, a Bitcoin trader, uh, you know, commodity trader, can take these classes and learn the fundamentals of the analysis and execution, meaning that we're going to go through the Wyckoff price structural analysis, and that's very unique. It's very contextual to the market. Um, tape rating techniques, you know, supply and demand, uh, uh, volume and price, effort versus results. Those are extremely important concepts to us. Relative and comparative uh, analysis. This is something more of the common knowledge, but we give our white coffee and twist to that. We give some of the nuances that are extremely important to us. And obviously, you know, tactical uh, things that we are discussing in those series as well. So um, very fundamental knowledge. And I would highly recommend anybody. And summer series is only 12 sessions. And we also have the promotion right now. So please sign up. And uh, where do they go to do that? Uh, wycoffanalytics.com and there you could find all of our life classes right here great and you have i think a very exciting class coming up yes which is the structural scanning course and this class is uh, so exciting to me that um, uh, i am going to attend as a student and uh, i'm very excited for this yeah. yes 
And this class um, is going to be led by one of our students who has been taking the classes for quite some time, um, including WMD class with Bruce. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of our students have grown into contributors. And it's just so exciting, Bruce, and to have the community as such vibrant community that, you know, produces new talent and it comes out like this and john has been just like so excellent on uh, with uh the skiing class we conducted part one it was very successful so we moved part two just because of the market actions and now it seems like everything is coming down so this is a great time to think about skinning for the current market environment what kind of stocks are you uh, picking, you know, to buy in this environment, you know, for what time frame, you know, what kind of characteristics, skin characteristics would you be looking for? So it's very exciting. I'm looking forward to this. This is a question that I get all the time is, uh, is there a good scan for uh, picking up a Wyckoff type candidates? And this course, uh, as I understand it, is going to be uh, scanning methods, which uses the stock chart scanning engine. Mm -hmm. But the orientation of the logic of the scanning is going to be towards uh, Wyckoff setups. Correct. And so this is what makes it very exciting is it's just not how to scan. It's how to scan for Wyckoff. And so, and then also scanning for context, meaning that there are certain times in a market cycle to use certain types of scans and there's other times to use other kinds of scans. And so I expect that not only will there be a great uh, building of knowledge about the logic of how to scan, but also there's gonna be a great library of scans that the students are gonna come out of this with. Absolutely. Now, the, the, uh, the other thing that I, uh, am excited about with this or let me ask you this as a question is that this is scanning part two for someone who has not attended scanning part one uh, will they still be able to get value from this absolutely the first session will be all review of part one john is going to go through the basic syntax basic scans that he presented in the in the first uh session and i'm going to take some time um and we probably might even start with that. Um, I'm going to go through the conditions of the market that are favorable for specific scans. And we'll kind of create the logic uh, throughout the whole price cycle as to what kind of scans would we be applying at this particular point of the price structure uh, and the price cycle. The, very exciting. Start April 2nd. So, and then runs for th three sessions. So uh, with that, let's keep moving on because there's a great, very exciting announcement that we really both have mm -hmm. uh, about the uh, communal Wyckoff watch list. Ramon, tell us about this. Well, this is something that Bruce and I discussed uh, like more than a month ago, and this has been in the works for probably more than a year. And, um, a month ago, it didn't make sense, you know, to launch something like this because of the market conditions and had, you know, the velocity of, of, and volatility in the market. But this is very exciting now that we're launching this and we are putting the emphasis on communal. What does it mean? It means that our community, the Wyckoff Nation, will participate in the creation of this Wyckoff watch list. And, um, Whatever, uh, whoever uh, from our community and even from outside would like to send us your weekly candidates for trading for the selection in the large and mid cap stocks. And we're starting with those. You know, you guys could do this by sending us an email um, uh, to wikofassociates at gmail.com. That email should include your stock charts, uh, uh, chart list. And that's very important. Uh, because we will not be accepting, you know, just uh, separate symbols or anything else, any type of charts. Uh, we really would like to receive an email from you um, based on the stock charts chart list that you created. And then uh, as we consolidate those lists, Bruce and I will have an opportunity to go through all of those candidates and then 
focus that list, minimize those list, that list, and we, we will present the final version each week. Bruce, I think this is so exciting. I can't wait, you know, for us to kind of like get into the process, into the routine and start doing this on a weekly basis. I'm very excited, not only for our community, but I'm excited for me because, <laughs> and for you, because yes. we're going to have our whole Wyckoff community putting eyeballs on the market and identifying Wyckoffian stock candidates and then boiling them down to a list of their favorite ideas. So a list doesn't have to be a big list they would submit. It's just a list of their, their favorite ideas. It could be a few names. But we're going to then put the best of those ideas into this communal watch list. And so we're going to have the best of the best ideas from our whole community in one place. This is going to be fun. Yes. Now, uh, the way that they would submit a chart list is they would submit it to this email address. Yes, Associates at gmail.com. Please send us your stock charts chart list to that email. And as we receive it, we, can, we will be able to go through that list. Uh, again, our students will do that. And then once that list is created, Bruce and I are gonna just go through that and finalize the selection. So. We're going to uh, switch screens at this point, and uh, Ramon's going to take over and just very briefly look at that, uh, that screen or that web page. And then uh, we're going to get on to um, the next part, which is uh, looking at uh, intraday trades. So here we go. All right. So now we're on Ramon's screen here. Ramon, you're going to show us how to get to this community chart watch list. Yes, so the first thing that you have to do is just to go to charts and tools. And this is gonna be you know, quite an, a long page here. So you have to scroll down almost to the bottom. And here um, under the reports and more, uh, there is uh, one option for the public chart lists. So you just press that. And that will bring you to the collection of public chart lists that Stock Charts publishes. And by the way, you know, um, I was not aware of this until recently, and it's just like such an interesting, good tool. Then under the search, uh, and I don't know why exactly it works this way, you know, you have to do it maybe twice, and then our okay. list comes up really quickly once you put in Wyckoff. So just put in Wyckoff and then it brings up, mm -hmm. got it, okay. Press on that and you're here. So we're gonna change some of the things here at the top. Again, we just literally launched yesterday, but here's your list. There are four pages and I think that will change, you know, but Bruce and I will discuss, you know, maybe we'll have just like the top 50, um, more defined number and off you go. You just go through the list. Um, Bruce, maybe we could, go somewhere in the middle because we've discussed some yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we discuss some of them? Absolutely. All right, so, well, this first one is uh, t technology stock software, Norton Life Lock. What do you think about that? Well, here's a, a beautiful accumulation structure that goes back and uh, th this, there's an attempt to create a sign of strength where it uh, on a gap and then it pulls back into the structure one last time for a last point of support, which is something that we get often after a sign of strength. And then from there, you can see that there's a beautiful higher low and then another higher low. And look at, look at how the inability of uh, Norton to be able to pull back uh, very much on that second where you right there that's just very bullish looking and then of course it runs up into a climax of sorts which needs to be absorbed and so we're uh, currently in a trading range but look at or some kind of a range bound condition but look at that beautiful uh, pullback above the long-term moving average so that's really constructive because most of the stocks 
in all the exchanges are well below their long-term moving averages right now, and their long-term moving averages are turned down. And then the other thing is there's a, a beautiful relative strength line there, and you can see this big base in the relative strength and then a resolution into an uptrend, which means that now this stock wants to be leadership. So that's what I see. Bruce, and I think that for the watch list, that's kind of like exactly what we want to find, right? Because we want to find, you know, like of structure for us. We want to find the causality. We also want to find, you know, emergence of the new trend, you know, and we study that in classes uh, very thoroughly. And Bruce just described all of this price action so nicely. And, um, we also want to contextualize where we are in the structure relative to what the market has done. And again, I'm just repeating Bruce here, but market was going down significantly. This stock did not go down as much. So they were not selling it. And we could see this also in the volume signature. There is not a lot of selling during the market reaction. So these are the type of candidates that we want to see um, in our uh, like of communal watch list. Um, Bruce, uh, let's go through Novadir because you know this is the stock that we've been actually following in WMT. We've been doing the anatomy of the trade. We have the trades from here and here. We had a trade here uh, and somewhere here. So we've been trading Novadir during the class really consistently. Yeah, uh, so what each each Wyckoff market discussion. We go into the anatomy of a trade. We've been looking to exclusively at NVIDIA from this perspective. Roman selected it. It was a beautiful selection. And then look at how well uh, it went up after that. And it's just been a, it's just been a great case study, Roman. So mm -hmm. I'll let you. Uh, um, and again, same characteristics, right, Bruce? Mm -hmm. As you said, yeah. holding above more than average, having a relative strength, uh, being in the group that is kind of like a, a you know big force behind you know the, the the market since actually the lows of 2009 um and still very much uh, you know persistent in the way how it reacts uh, uh in you know with the market this is a much uh, better acting stock than the market as a whole and uh of course this is very important to us and this is something that we would be looking for in scanning technique also, mm -hmm. is how to identify these. Let's take a minute and look at uh, Old Dominion, the next one. Because mm -hmm. I'm actually uh, pretty excited about the truckers. Yes. And uh, I see a lot of uh, really interesting candidates in the truckers. And I would just, my eyeball goes right to the, the last uh, bars on the right. We'll look at, look at the uh, launch of uh, Old Dominion off of a uh, small, looks like an accumulation structure, probably would look very good on an intraday chart. But uh, the, the veracity with which it's rallying off of the uh, attempt to test the long-term moving average, I think is really compelling. And also the relative strength has been showing up you know, yeah. since June coming out of the big structure. Bruce, let me ask you this question. And this is kind of like a regular discussion that uh, uh, you know, we would have in WMD. What do you think is the reason now uh, that with everything that's going on, why the trucking is showing signs of strength? Well, I think that uh, the one thing that's a technical reason is the, the relative strength is showing that the truckers are leadership. Old Dominion is leadership because it's in a relative strength uptrend. And so we would expect a stock that's in relative strength uptrend to become relative strength again when the, the uh, market uh, stops correcting, which it did here recently. And so that's probably the most important thing. And then the other part of it is, so somehow or another, the internal uh, dynamics of the trucking industry have become uh, really, really good uh, since the middle of last year. And so this is showing up in the relative strength. And then the second part is, is that I just think that the sheer magnitude of the um, uh, 
Fed liquidity infusions and also the uh, fis fiscal policy, $2 trillion of uh, fiscal stimulus is going to cause the economy to come raging back. And there's going to be a lot of business for the truckers. There's a shortage of truckers right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right. Well, with that, should we jump to our next topic? Please? Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. I know that everybody's going to want to hear your discussion uh, about the uh, current intraday trading environment. And um, I want to say, because Ramon said, well, it's like it's intraday trading now, but normally that's not necessarily your orientation is to be trading on the intraday, but that that's what this current environment calls for. So with that, Ramon, take it away. Yeah, so because you know WMD classes happen only once a week and the market was so fast we had to make sure that we provide analysis to our wake of nation on a more consistent basis almost daily that's how fast the market is right now so Bruce has been doing a great job you know uh, with the uh, power charging with the blocks um, and you know I just kind of like took it uh, to Twitter and started uh, posting some of the analysis because I felt that our members would benefit from this real time. So I'm just going to show you some of the tweets uh, with the analysis where, you know, we're identifying the potential bottom. So these are just the charts that were posted uh, really at the spots where the chart is shown. Uh, so as we go through multiple lows here, you know, and we started seeing some buying even at the preliminary support into the selling climax, into the national emergency announcement, into phase B testing. And there was an idea here that this was a potential spring marginal lows, then it fails on uh, given Newsom announcement. And uh, we were thinking that there's gonna be a reaction to the downside. The question was, will it be more substantial climactic or will it be more of this spring type of the reaction and obviously we don't predict we just follow the price and the next day you know uh, on the 23rd um the price showed us change of behavior created resistance to overcome which was very important and needed to hold that low so you kind of could see as the analysis progresses you know uh, how we are thinking about this analysis and those are all of the fundamental Wyckoff concepts. Move to the downside, uh, has to have continuation, no continuation after the gap, uh, pre-US session aggression um, as a change of behavior, uh, creation of these two very important bars um, on, the, on the intraday level, no ability to create the new low. And that's how we go through the analysis, you know, tweet by tweet, so to say. And you could see how analysis evolves, uh, uh, making the new high, uh, trying to make the new high, trying to break it, trying to break it again. But the character changes with every reaction. And here we're making the call that, you know, if it overcomes this uh, level and it seems like it will at this point, then we're gonna uh, start rallying, uh, which indeed happened. And as we go through the analysis, and this is, by the way, Bruce's, you know, on the PNF. So this is from his blog. So check this out. Um, we're starting to make some assumptions about the targets. And by the way, Bruce, we need to publish your PNF targets as well. You know, from yesterday's class. Okay. Um, looking at the capitulation bar and defining on the tape reading level what that potential level is, using also Fibonacci. Um, retracement and that's important because a lot of traders are going to look into that uh, again Bruce's uh, 1962 analog we're gonna see this in a second let me just show this to you because it's just really really cool right here so Bruce compares the current environment to 1962. I thought Bruce, that was such an excellent comparison structurally. And we still have to see, you know, how we're gonna create some kind of course here, whether we're gonna have the same type of rally or not. Um, so all of those questions we were discussing yeah. in we, W. Indeed. And we don't need to get ahead of the, the market. We can just wait for the market to give us its cues about what it wants to do. Which Absolutely. is your point. Absolutely your point. 
And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I would show real trade. So this is like the trade that was unfolding. Um, you know, I was um, shorting volatility through puts, uh, expecting some kind of climactic action, which occurred here on the intraday change of behavior that follows, you know, adding to the position, scaling out a little bit, and still working on that trade. Any type of explanations as to how supply comes in and how absorption happens, you know, and how failures happens and how this third time, it was a very important moment right here close to the resistance where we have the vertical absorption. The price shows some selling, but it's less and it's being absorbed almost immediately. That is the precursor to a potential continuation uh, from this particular spot. More and more I see uh, in, and you're, you've done a lot of work on this, the accumulation occurring on a declining scale mm -hmm. and distribution occurring on a rising scale. And I believe right. that that's what we saw happen yeah. uh, here in January, February. Yeah, and the momentum to the downside that's what is so important in the creation of the structure like this, right? Or momentum to the upside, like a strong momentum to the upside in the leadership, especially. Yeah. Um, that, you know, that would dictate that type of, you know, uh, creation of the structure. Um, just the intraday analysis, and Bruce has made this point already. I just want to reiterate it. Because of high volatility, because of how the market moves so much, we kind of have to go more to the lower time frame, but at the same time, you have to recognize that there are some spots uh, where you know you have to start thinking about what's going to come next, and if something is going to hold, then we want to be able to put on our swing trades and carry them finally overnight. It was not possible during the decline or even during the bottom information but definitely became more possible since uh, last Thursday, Friday and into Monday. Um, so what else here, Bruce, um, can I show? Um, got about a, just under two minutes. Under two minutes. Okay, well, probably just the latest. Um, so some of the lessons, you know, that we learn as we go along the way. Um, so let me just bring this up. Uh, for instance, from last night, um, this was the uh, tweet, you know, uh, after the session, we saw some selling going into the session. Um, and that raised the question, are we going to have some kind of reaction? So the question was, will it fall down? Well, there are certain requirements that we need, right? So we need to commit below specific support area. Also, as the price goes down, and it did overnight, you know, we want to look at the character with which the price moves. And we said that the bullish case scenario would see depressed selling on slowly sliding down prices without significant down progress. And this is what we see in shortening of the thrust. Look at the character with which it moves down. Um, and then we have to see as a confirmation a breakthrough specific resistance points. And look how rally just took us out of this area. So all of that um, you know, we're just going through. And at this point, Bruce, I think that the targets are still relevant. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually, you know, uh, converting these targets into the PNF targets that you uh, provided us last, uh, yesterday, and just comparing those. Well, we'll do that for sure. And uh, we're almost out of time, but Roman, uh, they get to your uh, Twitter feed it's Wyckoff analysis, right? At Wyckoff analysis. Yes. Okay. And with that, Roman, thank you for being here and for giving us such good news. And uh, we will um, uh, uh, do it again sometime really soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.